Hey guys, before we start this reaction, I wanted to let you guys know that I do pause and I do talk a lot. If you guys did not know, this is my reaction review. So this is my video and it's not the actual anime episode. So if you guys want to watch that, check it out on Crunchyroll or Funimation. Hulu also has it as well or anywhere else you guys plan on watching it. So yeah, just letting you guys know that this is my video. All right. Enjoy. So I was like two minutes into the episode and the recording just decided to stop. So Streamlabs OBS has been tripping balls on me. And I'm like this close to switching back into regular OBS, dude. This close. Why do you do this, Streamlabs? Why do you do this? Anyways, <clears throat> husband dozen and waifus, what's going on? My name is Hermazar and welcome to another reaction review of My Hero Academia. So my boys, finally the title states Hey, Class 1A versus Class 1B. Is it about time we see the fruitions of the training from both 1A to 1B? I'm sure you guys heard various things from manga readers. I'm not gonna tell you guys, but you should and shouldn't believe whether if you listen to them or not. But let's just enjoy the ride of this anime. Let's enjoy the ride of this arc. Let's see if Bones pulls in clutch, which I stated in the last one, that Bones is probably going to heavily, heavily carry, unless they're fo focusing on the movie again. Now, before we hop into this live reaction, if you guys haven't already, please subscribe we're trying to get to 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year and for you know we're inching our way towards it about 65% of you guys are not subscribed and it would be super dope if you guys subscribe it would mean a lot it would mean the world to me please I know I'm trash but you know it would help me a lot so anyways my boys let's hop into this episode of my hero academia you know the guy with the scar on his eye like this guy right here he kind of reminds me of a character from street fighter what's his name vega i don't know why probably just because of the scar and the mask his face looks like a mask and the hair kind of reminds me of vega i know he said foolish little brother it sounded like he said kawaii brother if i heard that right like cute brother the mere fact that AFO did this to his brother, it makes me think, yo, like, on the low low, on the high high, all for one is crazy powerful. Like, he's so OP, it's not fair. Look, he, he had, he had eyes. He had eyes before he was a thumb. You know how he says you're barely at 20%? It makes me think there is a possibility that Deku can go 100% without breaking. But using 100% puts so much pressure on the body. So I wonder what's what's the training going to be for him to get to the point for him to be at a hundo. Deku wakes up from his crazy dream. I wonder if it's actually hurting. You know, like the ultimate thap. Shut Sunglasses, man. You know, it makes you really think. I, I'm really happy that they're putting that they gave Shinso some heavy light here because, in that sense, I always thought Shinso had crazy powers and why he was always put into the supplementary classes beats me. Maybe he couldn't like mind control the robots that they had to fight. Is Deku running late night? You know, you know what they used to tell me? I could tell you guys, like, I, I grew up in a private school, right? You know how he's running after he had his, uh, his moment? What the nuns used to tell me is, like, if you're, if you're horny, you just gotta go for a run. But I'm like, bro, how do you go for a run when you have a bone? It's gonna hurt. Sorry, just, you know, wanted to throw that out there. See? See, he couldn't sleep after that. So he had to go for a run. He took the advice from the nuns. Of course, of course it's Oyama that checks on him. <laughs> hey, baby, you haven't had enough cheese. Dude, look look how beautiful our Oyama is. It definitely was not a dream. Well, there's some dreams that I remember vividly. But they're dreams because you're supposed to forget after you wake up after a few minutes. But I'd easily forget. Isn't it crazy, though, that the first one for all user kind of has that resemblance of Shigaraki almost? Even though Nana is the one that's in relation to Shigaraki. Then we also got, like, Vega from Street Fighter. I'm assuming the Super Saiyan looking one is uh, All Might, right? Because he's still alive, so he's not going to be there. I feel it, though. I feel it, though, Deku. Sometimes I'm like, fuck sleep. And I just go for a run I really do like how like rather than All Might dismissing Deku's like dream dream but he's actually taking it in as a vision because so yeah so All Might hasn't experienced this so even though he hasn't experienced this he knows that Deku's probably going to intake these different memories and uh he's going to get these different experiences rather than dismissing it he's going to try to help him out which I really do appreciate this is only a phenomenon that happened to you yo how is All Might flying 
You know, this passing down of power totally reminds me of Attack on Titan. How Deku's getting all these memories from the previous users. Kind of like how Eren got the memories from the previous users of the founding Titan. Even if one of us falls, although we can meet again with one for all. An impossible dream. So an impossible dream meaning that it's a dream that people might deem impossible. But it is possible because that quirk is the one that kind of combines them and unites them as one. That's why the first wielder was saying, you're not alone. Yeah, there's gonna be someone like you know how Toto, you know how Shoto over here with fire and ice. Someone he'll be fire, ice, and grass. He'll be like the the literal Pokemon starters. Except ice is not a starter. <laughs> That's what he had to say. Oh, Nana's so pretty. I mean, she is. <laughs> it's not like you're being caught with an affair. What a lovely couple. Oh, see, it's like Shinso and Deku are good friends. Well, they're not. I, I feel like they're just friends, but then they're just happy to see each other, which is nice. Because we haven't seen much of Shinso to this point. Her winter outfit, though she's just naked. Freaking Bakugo walking in all upset. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> Did you, I just noticed her eyebrow just like fucking quivered at the mention of of a uh, Hatsume. <laughs> she punched herself. <laughs> Calm down, Monama. Calm down with her evil villain ass. Look at look at Pony. Pony's so adorable. She looked like she's she's like from an American cartoon. I like Mushroom Girl. Weirdly enough, if I was to say anything, Mushroom Girl, I kind of like her. This guy that kind of looks like he's from a Final Fantasy. Dude, where's my favorite character? Where is my favorite character? I mean, I like Tetsu Tetsu. Don't get me wrong, but where's my favorite character? Look at this Dragon Ball Z character. <laughs> <laughs> kind of built like me. Yosetsu, so Awase and Kaibara. Awase Kaibara. See, the thing is, o Awase kind of looks like he's just normal as fuck. And then Kaibara also normal as fuck. He looked like he'd be from an isekai anime. And then o Awase looks like he'd be in like an adventure, like Dragon Quest. Kamakiri and Kuro, they're cool as fuck. Kamakiri looking like he's a fucking dinosaur. And Kuro looking like he's a shadow boy. You all know Kendo and Kodai. I do like Komori, aka, uh, aka Mushroom Girl. And we got Jesus. Christ over here, Shio Shiozaki, Shishida, Lame, Shoda, Dragon Ball, Pony. People like Tokage, Toka. Yes, the best character, Manga Fukidashi, right there. I love Manga Fukidashi. And then we have the Final Fantasy character and Monama. This is so many character introductions. Well, some of it is character introductions, but I'm really bad with names, so you're gonna, you guys are gonna have to excuse me. Shinso! Let's go! Fuck yeah, dude. Shinso is so cool. I love the excitement that Deku has, even though, like, their encounter during the sports festival was, like, so intense. But you could tell that Shinso and Deku can get along. Deku gets along with everybody. He's the main character. So, anyways. Aw, uh, I miss Suyu, dude. I miss Suyu. Look at Ojiro. Ojiro's like, oh, man, so cool. Oh, yeah, Ojiro lost to him. And I kind of like how this ties in once again to Deku talking to the previous vestiges. Because in that moment, he was also seeing them as well. And he could only use like a very, very small percentage of his power. So that's why he only saw shadows of them. Ooh, very competitive. That was passion right there. Now, the weird thing is, you know how Shinso is just being reintroduced into this part right here? Shinso was constantly popular. Constantly popular, even though he's like disappeared for a few seasons, you know? It's great that he's getting his moment now. I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve it because my boy deserves it after a performance at the sports festival. But like, it was just very interesting that he was very, very popular, even though he wasn't really doing anything in the arcs prior. Would you guys call that your <laughs> comfort character? So intense. <laughs> Monama. Fucking Monama. That's true. Because Shinso is inexperienced a bit. It might be more of a disadvantage. But it can also be an advantage if they use him properly. <laughs> That's right. Dude, he was so bad at being a villain. Super cute prison. Wow, it is so cute. Because the principal's on there. Dude, we got Beast Titan over here. <laughs> Fucking Bakugo. Alright, let's analyze the teams, boys. This is a really, really solid team. Suyu, Kaminari, Kirishima. They got Beast Titan over here. They got the guy that, uh, 
forgot his name. We got uh, Chi Chi over here and Jesus Christ. Shiozaki. Very cool team. We got Tokoyami, Momo, and Oyama. Oh, there's Invisible Girl. I was like, where is she? I couldn't even fucking see her. And we got Mushroom Girl, Kendo, Kuro, and Best Boy Manga, dude. This team is almost unfair up top. They got Todoroki and we got Ojiro, the main character over here. But then they also got Hentai Monster over here and they got Tenya. They got Cute Pony, Tetsu Tetsu. I forgot who the... This this guy that looks like he's from an isekai anime and i forgot what this guy's power is and then we got bakugo jiro sero and sugar boy so this is actually a pretty this is a actually very very solid team and then we got like a drag we got the two dragons over here we got the guy that's from adventure quest and the guy from final fantasy over here and then of course we got the use i feel like this is a usual team right fucking mineta mina ochako and deku then this is different they got mona they got the guy from dragon ball z forgot what these two's powers are to be honest i i, I honestly forgot oh nice at least dragon ball z character kind of guy is you know he's he's telling him don't mind monama's bitch ass <laughs> But I like that Deku is like, very excited to, to fight against Shinso again. Dude, that mask is so fucking cool, though. I don't have a thing for older men. Yeah. What, what All Might is saying is, like, it's uh, people who have experience versus people who learn from the book and who has improved by learning from the book. The street smarts that you got from actual experience versus book smart. Kind of, this is a kind of cool concept that they went with. A normal concept that we always see in anime, but this is still pretty cool. <laughs> he brought a mic. Vlad King. You guys should watch the uh, the theory video that we did with uh, Roger's base. Talking about how he might be the traitor. Yeah, fucking Jesus, dude. Oh yeah, she bodied him. What's really nice is that rather than be like, I gotta beat her because she beat me last time. He's like, dude, she's actually fucking amazing. It's nice that even though at this point right now, they're going up against each other. This is still a lot of love. Besides Monama. <laughs> Beast Titan's here! Oh no, sue you! <laughs> Typical Beast Titan stuff. See? His cork is beast. I wonder if he could throw baseballs too. Herm, you're pausing too much. Oh shit, Air Prism. Dude, that could be really bad too. Oh shit. My other vocal cords, persona cords. That is so cool. It's actually cool to see it in this way because in the manga, I thought he was just pressing buttons to fix it, but he's actually adjusting how the mouth moves to change the voice. It's so cool. Very cool. Very cool first appearance for uh for Shinso. I love it. First reappearance, I should say. So really good start. For the class 1A versus 1B uh, training session. Like I was saying throughout the reaction, you can tell that there's love still on both sides. Shinso, the only reason why he's showing a really rough, sturdy entrance is because he really wants to be into the hero program. We saw his uh, meeting with Deku in the hallway, and it was still very friendly, you know? Like, But at this point, when it's the battlefield, when it's you trying to get to where you need to be, everyone's an enemy, everyone's a rival. Well, I'm still friends with everybody, but at, at that sense, if you really think about it that way, like even Roger's base, a good friend of mine, he's my rival too. But regardless of that, this was a really good reintroduction of Shinso's character. We got a little flashback of how people were viewing him as a, like the, the first thing people would think when they hear that his quirk is brainwashing is, wow, he can do so many bad things and get away with it. No one will know it's you. But that's not what he wants to do. We see it plain and clear. No matter how criminally dangerous Shinso's quirk looks, Shinso wants to be a hero. And when you look at it that way, it's kind of like, you know what? Anyone could be a hero if they put their heart to it, even if they have a quirk looked at and sought after by villains everywhere. And if they are able to utilize Shinso's quirk in that way, it would greatly benefit them. Now, when it comes to Shinso, when we saw him in the sports festival, he didn't really do too much fighting in that sense. He was mostly just he was mostly just brainwashing people to his whim and winning. The only reason why Deku was able to do it was through the vestiges of the uh, one for all quirk, which is very interesting that we're getting that again with the reintroduction of Shinso. That was kind of like in parallel to their first encounter, their first fight in the sports festival. 
So that's still that's pretty cool in my personal opinion. Now, I was also talking about how I do appreciate All Might rather than dismissing Deku's experience, even though he hasn't experienced it as well. He's realizing that Deku is going to experience these different things that he hasn't done. So he's just going to have to guide him and help him understand it more. And All Might's going to have to understand and learn the situation as well alongside with him. So yeah, guys, that is honestly my overall reaction review. Um, I don't want to, you know, hold you guys any longer. I did talk throughout the episode and I do I'm, I do apologize that I paused a shit ton. It's just how I am. It's how I react. So if you guys don't like that, I'm, I don't. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is my live reaction review. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you guys go and drop a like for me because that would help me a lot. Subscribe. Don't forget to click that notification bell, my boys. I will catch you guys in the next one. Subscribe. 50,000. 50,